I'm the small town tourist and I am in Holbrook, Arizona. Holbrook is three hours northeast of Phoenix, Arizona. It's located in Navajo County, and as of the 2010 census, the population is just north of 5,000 residents. This small town was founded in 1881 and was named after Henry Randolph Holbrook, the first chief engineer of the Atlantic and Pacific Railroad. here at the Wigwam Hotels. We are super late. Uh, we actually ran into a lot of bad weather coming up over the Mogollon Rim. Uh, there was probably six inches of snow. The traffic was backed up for miles. It took us an extra three hours to get here today, but we made it. We're here and uh, we're excited. We can't wait to get into the Wigwam and crash for the night so that we can go out and start filming Holbrook, Arizona. All right, we are here. This is the Wigwam, and uh, we're going to show you around a little bit. It's pretty small, actually. Uh, it's not maybe a little bit different than what you would maybe expect from the outside because there is a kind of a lower ceiling here. You can't, it's not like it goes all the way to the top like a teepee would or anything like that, but uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty small little space. Uh, they do give you uh, a nice desk here to kind of, if you've got some work to do or if you want to grab a bite to eat there, a nice little sitting area. Uh, you've got just a couple chairs and a nice little table. Yeah, so the bathroom was kind of tiny, but the important thing is the bathroom was very clean and that's important obviously to me and to most people. In fact, the wigwam overall was super clean. The shower is tiny. You can see how narrow the door is there, but the shower itself had amazing water pressure. That is huge for me. Well, you can see that uh, we had some snow overnight. Got some snow on the windshield. But what an absolutely beautiful stay here in the wigwams last night. It was nice and quiet, but uh, this is our wigwam here. We were in wigwam number five. Absolutely perfect stay, and I'm looking forward to having a great day, even though it's cold and cloudy and overcast. All right, well, since the, uh, the wigwams, they don't offer coffee, I had to run to the local McDonald's to grab a cup of coffee. So I am pulling up to the drive-through. Let's uh, see if they got my mobile order. Hopefully they did. Uh, no, I'm okay. okay yeah. Have a nice day. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, buddy. But uh, the ton of history here, there's actually a road here uh, called the Bucket of Blood Road. We're going to be going to the Bucket of Blood Road and uh, checking that out. The Bucket of Blood Saloon, where this gunfight uh, took place. Unbelievable stuff. So uh, stay tuned. All right, I am here at the Petrified Forest National Park. It's about 20 miles or so east of Holbrook. It is definitely worth it. Now, today we're having, well, a snowstorm, so it's not gonna be the best day to go through the National Park for us, but we wanted to bring you out because it's definitely worth it. So if you're up on Interstate 40 and you're somewhere around Holbrook in this area, I highly recommend coming out to the Petrified Forest National Park you're going to have to spend a few hours doing it. There's so many things to see and so many stops, but I definitely recommend it. All 
All right, so behind me is the Bucket of Blood Saloon. There was one gunfight in particular that took place here, and they don't know if it was a rival cowboy kind of gangs or if it was over a poker game or maybe even both. The gunfight broke out and it was so bloody they said that it was like someone spilled a bucket of blood on the floor. And so this saloon became known as the Bucket of Blood Saloon. Holbrook was a wild place. The Pleasant Valley Wars were also here, and it's one of the reasons why the United States wouldn't even welcome Arizona as a state because it was so wild out here. So anyway, this is the Bucket of Blood Saloon, known for the probably the bloodiest gunfight in Arizona history. One of the attractions here in Holbrook when you come from the south, when you enter into Holbrook from the south, you're gonna notice on the west side of the road, you're gonna notice a bunch of giant dinosaurs. Now they believe, from what I read, they believe that hundreds of millions of years ago, this area was the perfect habitat for dinosaurs. How they know that? We really have no idea, but it's cool nevertheless, and it's definitely a small town attraction. When you think of the Wild West, Holbrook, Arizona is one small town that should immediately come to mind. In fact, during the 1880s, Holbrook was known to be one of the toughest and most lawless towns in America. It wasn't uncommon for Wild West shootouts to break out several times per week in this small high desert town. Outside of town, a bitter cattle and sheep war was brewing. This led to the infamous Pleasant Valley Wars between two families, the Grahams and the Tewksburys. One of the most famous or infamous characters of this time, depending on your family's perspective, was a man named Commodore Perry Owens. He was elected as the Apache County Sheriff and would ultimately be involved in Holbrook's most notorious gunfight. Owens came to Arizona in 1881. He soon became known by the natives as the Iron Man because many believed he couldn't be killed. He was thought to be a devil. Anyone who would make comments about his appearance would likely end up on the wrong side of his 45 caliber gun barrel. It's common history that Owens killed a lot of Native Americans, which would ultimately lead to the Holbrook locals to hire him to end the Pleasant Valley Wars. At this time, the Blevins family had relocated to Arizona due to being wanted by the law in Texas. Andy Blevins, also known as Andy Cooper, was thought to be the leader of a gang of horse thieves operating in northern Arizona. The local cattlemen wanted something done about the Blevins and their gang of horse thieves, so they pressured Owens to take action. After all, he was the new sheriff in town. On September 4, 1887, Sheriff Owens rode into town to serve Andy Blevins a warrant. To show the town he wasn't afraid of the Blevins family, he attempted to serve the warrant alone. The story has it that when Owens knocked on Andy Blevins' door, Owens demanded Andy leave immediately. Andy told Owens he needed a few minutes to get his things together. Owens said no and fired his Winchester rifle into the body of Andy Blevins, killing him on the spot. Later, Owens would testify to a different version of the story. He said that Andy Blevins refused to leave and reached for his own gun, attempting to kill Commodore Owens. Well, after killing Andy Blevins, Owens fired additional rounds, striking John Blevins and killing Mosby Roberts and Sam Blevins. Sam Blevins was just 15 years old at the time and was unarmed. 
He died in his mother's arms. All of this chaos took place in just three minutes. John Blevin survived the shooting but was found guilty of attempted murder but was later pardoned by the governor of Arizona before serving his sentence in the Yuma prison. Commodore Perry Owens was cleared of any and all wrongdoing. Owens chose not to run for re-election for county sheriff and instead took a job with the railroad working in security. Later, he would be nominated as sheriff of Navajo County in 1895. Holbrook, Arizona is a small town full of rich Western history, including the Pleasant Valley Wars, the Bucket of Blood gunfight, the Owens-Blevins shootout, and of course, historic Route 66 and the Wigwam Hotel. If you find yourself nearby, perhaps visiting the Painted Desert and the Petrified Forest, it's definitely worthwhile to stop and visit. Until next time, get off the interstate and go visit small town America. 